Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and the systems I want to feed are the three yellow buckets that I've got my European night crawlers in. They're right there in front of you. <laughs> kind of hard to miss. They're, they're being checked in on on a very regular basis. We've always been coming back on 14 day intervals. So once again now, it's been 14 days, two weeks since our last check in on these systems, at which time they had received their 15th feeding. And right now I'm kind of in a overload mode in my freezer, so I need space. So I'm going to try to alleviate my situation by giving these guys a good hearty feeding of all kinds of yummy summer fresh fruit and whatever else I could find in there. Make up some space and uh, I'm sure they're going to appreciate it. So let's get these up on the bench and get to work. What I have here is a huge bag full of watermelon rinds, maybe some cantaloupe rinds too, all kinds of melon rinds for them today. A really delicious feeding. So let's get down here into bucket number one to get the feeding underway. Mm, nope, I don't like that shadow. Camera's casting a little bit too much of a shadow, sorry. I mean, you're working with obvious limitations when you're operating in a tiny space like this. But it's always interesting to see what you can pull off despite the limitations. Now what we had done on this side here with this coffee filter was indicate where the last feeding had been. And I don't have any coffee for them today either, so this will continue to be our covering of feeding zone indicator. The only the top covering is that cardboard that was sitting out here. So we'll feed on that side when we're done, but I always like to check out how the previous feeding is coming along, if there's any leftovers of it. And maybe in the winter time when this system originally started, I think it was winter time but either way the the temperatures were much cooler and the worm activity in general was a lot slower so I wouldn't expect a lot of progress in my systems I would kind of expect leftovers and didn't really think that any of my systems were very productive due to the possibly because of the cold this that would appear to be the slowdown of the worm activity but it does seem like now that we're pretty much in the thick of the summer months with nice warm weather. The worms definitely thrive in warmer weather and their appetite is more significant in the warmer weather too it seems. So I'm not sure what this strand is, if that's some sort of a natural material. I guess if we had put some sort of a fibrous long food in there, maybe like a stalk of celery or something, that might be the leftovers. I'll assume that it's a degradable piece of material and we'll just leave it although sometimes little bits of stuff that's never going to break down slip into your systems little labels and stickers and things that just need to be fished out when you bump into them lots of nice castings in here last time we didn't add bedding we just came in here with a hand or handful or two of food and dumped it in and I was thinking that maybe today we would be a little bit more generous on the bedding I kept thinking that maybe, hey, you know, look at the material in this system. It looks so close to being done. I mean, it all seems like it's pretty much done. Very little residue within the material. It's very clean, compost only practically. And I was reluctant to put in some of my prepared bedding since that's shredded, but I've got a collection of napkins and paper towels that I thought we might be able to use so that if for whatever reason in the near future we thought that we didn't want that hunk of bedding in there anymore. It would come out perhaps intact to some degree. I don't know. It's kind of my thinking. So I thought we could supplement the melon rind with a little bit of paper towel or a napkin. So let me see what I got over there for them. Oh my, I just noticed the camera is out of whack. Apologies. I'm not sure what that's going to result in in terms of video quality. <laughs> Jeez. Lovely. Apologies again. Well, what's better in a yellow bucket than a yellow napkin to use as bedding? My mom likes using these big fancy napkins from Ikea. So she's always got a bunch of them on hand and it's her everyday napkin usually. Well, maybe not. But whenever guests come over, the fancy colorful napkins come out. So I've also got, besides that, a piece of paper towel maybe? Or is that a napkin? This is definitely paper towel right here. So maybe we'll combine a little bit of melon rind and then layer in some more paper. 
Let's give them these two pieces, one piece of cantaloupe and one piece of watermelon stuck to each other. I have much more watermelon here, so we'll give them three more little pieces like that. You know, that should be enough because I've got to save some for the other systems too. So maybe the white stuff we'll just use as top covering for the food to, for, to a certain point, although I guess we'll really be just backfilling the feeding area like we usually do. So the top covering is really just going to end up being the cardboard that was out here and the feeding zone indicator will continue to just be the the coffee filter or what remains of the coffee filter <laughs> look at this thing oh well hopefully we'll still be able to tell where we last fed but since they're all kind of aligned if one of these feeding zone indicators and one of these systems were to get gobbled up then then we'd just be able to refer to the other bins to see which side they're all being fed on because the same way this system had last been fed here and is now being fed over here when we come over into bucket number two, you're going to see it's the same arrangement. It was fed on this side, so we'll be feeding on this side today. This, uh, this feeding zone indicator appears to be somewhat more intact. <laughs> and here's a little piece of it, but we'll just incorporate that in as bedding, I guess, at this point. It looks pretty beaten up. And as far as the feeding they got last time, I'm assuming we're going to see no leftovers again, just like in the other bin. And despite, I, despite knowing what we're going to see in here, I still like the idea of coming in, inspecting it, aerating it. At least seeing how things are coming along and not just, you know, assuming that I know what's going on in here just based on the observations in the other two similar systems. Alright, I must say things look really nice down in there. I am noticing a good amount of moisture in both systems too so far and I'm assuming that's what we'll see in the next one but we'll see that what we get when we get there but with all this melon rind going in sorry for that crackling noise I was kind of pressing the two buckets up against each other by accident but yeah this melon this feeding of melon rinds I think is going to bring with it a good bit good bit of moisture so I'm sure what we see in here next time we come in is going to be just as just as moist, if not more moist. It's getting tough to stack this stuff up and get it out of my way so I can really submerge the feeding down low. But we'll take what we can get and set up another feeding zone for these little guys. Similar setup, we'll use one of these nice big yellow ones on the very bottom. I'll just try to unfold it, and get it spread out nicely down here. And I have what appears to be a couple more pieces of cantaloupe here, but they're frozen together. It would be nice if I could share and give each system at least a little piece of cantaloupe. So the piece I broke loose will go to the last system, because that's the last piece of cantaloupe. And then in here we could provide a nice generous handful of watermelon. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> By the way, the estimated worm count when we launched these systems off was not calculated jointly like I do in a lot of my worm bin launches. I think I uh, neglected to use the opportunity to ask my viewers to provide their input on the topic, so I took my own approach of assuming that I knew how many, approximately how many worms were occupying the the one bin that these worms all came out of and then when I split split that estimated quantity of what I thought was 1200 oops, sorry and divided it three ways I came up with the 1200 which I you know divided three ways and calculated an estimated starting count in each of my bins of 400 worms I think that may have been one of the most ungraceful transitions from one bin to another that I've ever seen. <laughs> sometimes it'd be nice to be able to just use both hands and sometimes I do. I try my best not to soil my equipment with my dirty gloved hand so 
I'm limited to only my so-called clean hand, which has already been bought into action a little bit. But we're going to do the same thing here, I suppose. Give them a uh, give them a nice big yellow napkin. Pile in some melon rind and send them on their merry way. Me, I'll have the extra room in the freezer because I'm really running low on space. <laughs> And I even thought about going even more generous on this feeding for these little guys with today today's check-in because I do need to liquidate some of my worm supplies in the freezer. I've somehow ended up with way more than I can store. So I, I do have a sense that the population in here, even if it did start out as 400 in the beginning, has grown beyond that. That's just my guess though. And it'll be interesting because once we um, once we get these little guys relocated into new homes, whatever that might end up looking like in the near future, I will be trying to quantify their numbers by doing a as good a job as I can, at least, to display them to the viewers, and you know, at some point, try to get some feedback on how many worms they thought they saw me launch into my system. Oops, man. Was I that rough? I broke two fingers on my glove. <laughs> All right, well, I guess these gloves are going to the trash pail. But before we do that, let's finish up our dirty work here of getting these little wormies fed. Luckily, we're at our last and third container. And what they're getting is what remains. We're just dumping it in. A little bit of frost, too, that collected in the bag for them. So. Here's that leftover cantaloupe. So each system did get some cantaloupe as well as watermelon. And I don't remember, did the uh, the second system get top covering pieces of napkin and other things? I've got a whole bunch of it here, so let's be sure to give these guys some too. Eh, if the second system missed out on that a little bit, hopefully the yellow napkin's enough to be a little bit of a, a bedding and carbon food source for them. But I think we're done. All right, good job. So yeah, I've got a few more things to take care of here as far as getting stuff cleaned up and put away. But I'm gonna sign off before that because that stuff's boring. But before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Oops. <laughs> I hope so. And if you did, as always, please don't forget just leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.